Welcome to the QB room. This is presented by Happy Dad. Um, we uh, we got some we got some good good stuff going on today. We got some sad stuff. Kyle's season's over. Sad day, um, man. Sad day. He's essentially off season has started. Probably don't know what to do with yourself, but don't. that also presents the opportunity for us to change it up a little bit. Uh, for those of you who are seeing this for the first time, my name is Jordan Palmer. I coach quarterbacks for a living. Used to play a long time ago. Kyle Allen. Uh, quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, backing up his buddy Josh. And uh, we've been doing this for two years now. And today's going to be a little different episode. We are not going to have a guest. Uh, we are not going to just talk about football news. We're going to get in deep. Kyle, why don't you tell them what we're going to do today? Yeah, I think one of the most interesting things coming into the AFC NFC Championship is the 49ers in general. But in my opinion, the offense. I think a lot of you guys who are football nerds like us and probably – People who watch this show are super football nerds. They watched that game, the 49ers versus Packers last week, and everyone was probably a little surprised. I think they were interested to see. They didn't get off to a hot start. They didn't have the lead. They struggled playing from behind. Um, and then they ended up, Brock Purdy ended up breaking one of the most crazy stats I think I've ever heard in my life is uh, Kyle Shanahan being 0-30, went down by seven points in the fourth quarter. Brock Purdy finds a way to bring him back and win. But I think... One of the interesting things about the 49ers this year is when you look at them, they are always playing with a the lead. They're a team that's, and you don't want to call them front runners, but they're always playing with a the lead. They play great with a the lead. They play great on schedule football. And I think when you really dive down into the numbers and the tape and, and watching them, they're a team that struggles when they get behind. And I think that's when you watch the Ravens game, when they have some turnovers, I think we're going to dive really deep into it, but, it's a team where, and it's a league where a lot of teams are are built to play on schedule. They're built to play with the lead. They're built to run the football, to build, to play from under center. And there's a few teams that can really play from behind and play in shotgun and throw it every down. I think of I think of us. I think of the Chiefs. I think of the Bengals when Joe's playing. I even think of C.J. Stroud and the Texans this year, just on time mm. on schedule football. Um, but there's the a lot of stats that yeah. the Rams at times too. Yeah. Matt Stafford. And I think it's, it's a combination between scheme and who you are as an offense and then who's standing behind center. So we're going to get deep into that today. And I know you have your own thoughts on it and your own stats to back it up too. Yeah. And we're going to dive deep into the tape. We actually have a bunch of clips and uh, we're not going to do a sit here and go. We think the San Francisco 49ers offense is great. Everybody knows that the stats back it up. We're going to kind of talk about how they're built and what they're susceptible to. Uh, this is not a Brock Purdy quarterback breakdown piece of content. I actually did one last week that's like kind of got a lot of views already. Uh, so check it out on my page. But so this isn't a quarterback conversation. This is deep on scheme. Um, this is a copycat league. If you're a football fan, you've heard that before. And you could, without any context, you could draw the parallels of, so that means one person does something and other people copy it. Um, and yeah, it is. This is a copycat league. Uh, I think a lot of industries are too. But when something, not just offense, but when something works really well for somebody, uh, other people look at it and go, can we do that too? Um, and it's not a bad so thing. We're gonna, I mean, you look around the league, yeah. everyone does it. But I think when you think about the 49ers, and we're going to talk about the good first, and then we're going to get into what they're susceptible to. But the 49ers, in my opinion, are the gold standard of innovation in the NFL. You had the idea to talk about this today, Kyle, because you're in it every day. You just got off of eight months of watching tape every single day. And you said San Fran is the gold standard. So explain why we picked San Fran as the example for this. Well, I just think from an offensive perspective, when you're when you're game planning for a game every week, right? You're coming in on Tuesday, you got your new opponent, you're watching, all right, who they play, right? Especially for me when I'm going like, all right, when I go see a new opponent, I'm trying to find their last five games. Who have they played? In my first game, I'm just trying to I'm trying to get some entertainment out of it too. I'm trying to pick the best quarterback I see on there, right? Or the best offense, the most fun offense to watch, right? And every week, if I see San Francisco in the last five games, I'm turning on immediately because Kyle Shanahan has shown over the years that he knows how to exploit defenses more than anyone else in the league. That's why San Francisco is always number one in the league in motions every year and shifts because he knows where to set people up to make sure pre-snap they're aligned and then how to motion to get guys in great matchups. And that's all the NFL is. It's how do you get a guy in a great matchup so my quarterback can throw his first read and we can move on. And I think when you look at the 49ers, they do that better than anybody else. And 
while we're game planning for these teams and the 49ers are on tape or the Chiefs are on tape or any of these great offenses, you see concepts, you see shifts and motions, you see personnel, you see formations that get guys into, into certain coverages where you know what you're going to get every time. And then a lot of the times we just kind of install the same thing and we put our own wrinkle on it. And I think that's what you're going to see in these clips. And that's why I wanted to talk about San Fran. I wanted to give them a little bit of their flowers first because what they're doing is fantastic. So Jordan, you're going to pull up the tape. We're going to pull up a couple of clips. We're going to start with this first clip, 49ers versus the Packers. So we're, I want to start off with the concept that the 49ers ran last year a ton and no one else in the league was running it. All right. So it's a very simple concept. And when we're watching these, this is, this isn't a Brock Purdy breakdown like Jordan was saying. So there's going to be some throws that he that are missed or they're thrown away or whatever. It's not about the plays. This is about the theory and the identity of the offense. And when we're watching these, these are first and second down pass plays that the 49ers will have in every single week. It doesn't matter who they're playing against. It doesn't matter who's on their team. They're going to run these plays and they're going to put their little wrinkle on them to make them perfect. And these are plays that we've stolen and other teams have stolen in the league over the past couple of years. So you see this first one right here. So George Kittle's your single X. He's your alert, basically. You're starting with him every time. You're getting your eyes to the right. And a lot of the times you're not throwing that, you're just trying to move coverage, right? Mm -hmm. Now he's getting his eyes back to the middle. He's got a spot route. This isn't anything revolutionary, all right? You got a corner route by Brandon Ayuk running out there. But now look what you got outside. Normally, if you're playing ball, right? All the high school guys, college guys, NFL guys, you're getting through your progressions and you got to swing out the backside. You're throwing your swing. You probably never get to your swing, maybe a couple times a season. You might make a guy miss. He might get tackled right away. But what the 49ers started to do last year is instead of having Juice block or have him run a route that he's probably not going to catch or have him run another spot route that someone's going to cover, they swing him out and essentially set a screen. So this is like a check down screen for him now, right? This gives Christian McCaffrey a much better chance once he catches this ball to make a miss. So don't worry about the play. Don't worry about what happened. But this is a staple of their offense. If you watch if you watch the 49ers next weekend, I guarantee you you will see this happen three to four times. They're gonna run this mm. play off of some type of some type of frontside read with a spot over the ball in a corner, and they're gonna get it out there. And they made a living on it last year. And teams have started to take this and bring it to their teams. So we go to the next clip. Well, and, and you, like you said, you said spacing. So let me just let's talk about spacing for a second. This is a concept that's in every single playbook where I have some element, whatever the route is, where somebody's number one, someone's over the ball, okay? Someone else is spotted up over here, okay? And then we've got a late swing, like you said, mm -hmm. like we rarely get there, right? Um, but I want to talk about like from a personnel perspective, okay? So great, you you know, can I, can my, uh, you know, I'm a fan of whatever, I'm a Buccaneers fan, like, would that work for us? Well, if you look at it from a personnel perspective, if you're going to isolate a tight end on a one-on-one -on -one route and you could pick from anybody in the NFL, you might pick George Kittle as your number mm -hmm. one pick, right? Fullback. This is not, uh, Juice, is not fullback from the 90s who weighs 275 and runs through Ray Lewis. Yeah, he's not the Ravens. This is an elite, like, in. he's a space blocker. He's elite in space. Well, this is a... This is as in space as it gets right here. Blocking that guy in space. So that's probably the guy you'd pick out of any fullback in the NFL or honestly any tight end in the NFL. That's probably who you'd pick. Throwing it to the running back on a swing route with this guy blocked, which when you look at this, if if and this is a bad ball again, we're not talking about Brock right now. Okay. If if uh C Mac catches that ball right there, I mean, this is the space between him and the next defender, assuming the best spatial blocker who's doing a great job right there. That's 5, 10, 15. That's 17 yards between him and the closest defender who can make a play on him, right? And then if you're going to throw a corner out, Ayuk's one of the guys you'd pick, right? So from a personnel perspective, and by the way, if you're going to hit this spacing route, okay? So if this dropper right here moves this way, then that's Debo Samuel catching the mm -hmm. ball right there, right? Who's physical, tough, and he's got that's safe. He's got to make a play. So from a scheme perspective yeah anybody can run anything i can install this on my son's flag team if we want but personnel uh, i guess that might be the number one pick at each one of those spots when you run this okay so spacing is a concept everybody runs this is a concept that you're saying now more and more people are running but i'm saying like from a personnel perspective this is a best case scenario which makes who this is a little bit less relevant on running and executing concepts like this. Now we're watching the Packers play the Chiefs. Go. 
yeah, so Packers Chiefs, different different type of concept here, but this is the same Shanahan tree, and this is a play that Shanahan has run. LaFleur, part of that Shanahan tree, and now he's running this play. So just watch this all develop right here, right? Go back from the top. So we got the pulling guard. You see the linebackers flow when they see pulling guard fake toss, right? They're thinking toss right. They're taking crack toss. They got so to get to their gaps. little intricacies. His hands go up. He gets depth. Mm -hmm. Look at the right. linebackers shoot, right? You got you got four guys and a guard on the right side of the field. You got to go. And he just scoots right behind him. But pause it right here. Pause it right when he gets past that backer. Look down here to the bottom. What do we got going on on the bottom? It's the same thing as we have on the other play. You got a blocker and you got your swing. So it's it's just how can we design all these plays, right? How can we design these plays to where we got intermediate shots? We got and by the way, they're running a post down here with Christian Watson, but oh, if this he, is the a corner, corner route. Blows the coverage, bro. The corner blows it. Look at it, single high. The corner, the corner bites on the the fake toss sweep, right? Yeah. It's just like I, I talk about it a lot. Like it's not about moving when you get to the NFL. It's not necessarily about moving defenders. It's about getting their eyes somewhere. So mm -hmm. when you hear like people on TV, like Ryan Clark, when you hear people who used to play defense that are on TV, you'll hear line, uh, uh, lines like eye discipline, right? And like having disciplined eyes. Like this is, this just gets this, this corner, like where his eyes are everywhere except for on number nine running wide open down the field. Mm -hmm. Um, no, but I love this. And then to sneak the tight end, this is Musgrave, right? About the other side. No, it's beautiful. It's just your old. So this is this is what the Patriots used to do with Brady and Gronk, right? This is mm -hmm. just some new age spunk on it. So imagine if it was Brady under center and he's faking counter to the right. He's faking power to the right. The tight end's coming right across the field and it's Gronk coming right across the field. This is the same exact deal. But now they're doing out of gun. They're marrying it up with their run game. They're marrying it up with what they do out of gun. And then they're adding that extra screen element on the back end of it which it might not show up on the stat sheet a bunch but that what's that's what helps these teams stay on schedule on first and second down and that's why jordan love feels so good if those if those first two primary guys aren't open i can check it down to my running back like that and i feel good about it because i know he's got a lead blocker and he's probably going to get six or seven yards right yeah absolutely i mean and all you can ask for when you throw the ball to the running back is we want to he, he's got to make the first guy miss Right, we want him to win his one on one. Okay, he's gonna block here, and now we're one on one with the corner. Mm -hmm. A lot of space, and everybody on defense is running this way, right? And I know they're throwing it that way, but either way, they just went like this. Oh crap! But if he goes through his progression and comes all the way back around, so there's a lot of space over here on a, a very high percentage throw. Yeah, and it's so. easy, right? It's for this isn't hard third down. This isn't like we keep saying it. That's not sexy. I mean, this is a pretty sexy play, but this is easy, and this is what the you want to, as a coordinator, you want to make it as easy as possible for your quarterback, right? We're when not trying to make these amazing it? throws. Is that middle field open? When do you think, when's he getting it? Is that middle field open or do you think he's just So he's got like a backside, coverage? he's got like a backside in route there. So he's just chasing it, right? So if these guys retrace and the corner plays where you should play, which is deep third, he's just kind of chasing coverage. So if the, if the, that gap is closed for number one, number two is wrapping around in there and he's getting it. Gotcha. So on a sheet of paper, this would say this pure progression, mm -hmm. okay? Pure progression. Let's just talk through it. There's three different types of reads in football for quarterbacks. There's pure progressions where it doesn't matter what the coverage is. I'm going one to two to three, right? Which is really him, but that's a pure progression. There's a progression plus an option, which is like, I'm going one to two to three, unless I get this look that I like over here, whether it's an alert or an option, whatever the terminology we use, where it's like, all right, I'm going one to two to three, one to two to three to four. Unless I get that look, then I'm going to take that. Okay, mm -hmm. So that's progression plus an option. And then there's pre-snap look, which is whether it's one high, two high, or man zone, or cover two, quarters, single high, I'm going away from rotation, man, I'm going here, two man, I'm going there. Like, there's a lot of options. So everything's kind of put into those three buckets. I literally, with my draft guys, went through this today. I'd argue that a screen is a pure progression. Throw it to H. <laughs> doesn't matter what the coverage is. So mm -hmm. this is a pure progression. I don't care what the coverage is. I'm starting with Musgrave. Right? I'm assuming that they're not alerting the fade over here. They got too much other good stuff coming. No. Then I'm working, like you said, wrap around, and then I'm checking it down to my back with a blocker on a legal play. I love it.
good find on that. All right, you picked this one. This is Niners Packers again. Talk me through this. Yeah, so this is what I think the Niners are doing this year that no one else is doing. And it's an interesting thing. It's almost CFL-esque. It's, you're trying to get guys on levels. But if you go back to the beginning of this play, right, it's all about getting guys in spots. It's all about getting guys in the, in the right positions, right? So look where Christian McCaffrey is right now, right? Right now, it's just a normal 3 by 0 set. He motions out. A lot of times when you see that running back motion out, he's lining up on the line of scrimmage. He's five yards deep in his spot. Now, in your mind, you're thinking – that's a disadvantage for the offense. He's five yards deep. Why are you doing that? I mean, look at 23. He's already down there. But they're just trying to get guys on different levels here, right? And there's so many different things that the 49ers do from this. And a lot of times Christian isn't even the primary read when they do this. But if you pause it right here, right? So a lot of times in too high, right? What do you run? Four verts. You're trying to two on one the safety. And a lot of times what you want to do is you want to get those guys on different levels so that safety has to take the inside guy first you get your eyes on him now it's when you're one-on-one -on -one with a, a cloud corner who's not expecting to have to cover vertical so when they installed this play right they're saying george go run as fast as you can at that safety bend if you win you're getting the ball if not you're taking two and you got c mac on different levels going right mm -hmm. they clear him out they got d ball on the under that's great yeah i, I actually norv turner who Mm -hmm. technically we both played for was the first one to say this where he's like you know we get antonio gates up and down the sideline all the time it was having speed attack us cover two safety and then having the at number two and then having the outside guy be slower down the field because that safety has to respect the speed the corner doesn't fold over and if he does you have some shallow cross or some element coming back so way you look at it right here is this is not that but it is the same effect by having him it's essentially that i can't think of another time where somebody lines up five yards that's not just wrong so yeah no i think one, especially no one else is doing it yeah and if george really bends right there and i'm not saying that he's doing it wrong but i'm saying but if he really bends right there then christian is open right now mm -hmm. at that point because this corner like it's just there's a lot of places you can put this ball where that corner is playing outside in on a collapsing. It's just a tough play for him. Um, and then to replace, this is a jerk route, guys. So this is him. He's just taking his time here by number three up top, coming here, taking time, working across the field. They did not invent that. I, I, maybe they did. I don't know. But a lot of people run jerk routes. But this is a great way to get. What they're also doing is they're getting seven out of here and allowing Debo to win. One-on-one -on -one with the backer. One-on-one -on -one with a linebacker who's no one – his own linebackers can't, aren't going to cover him in one-on-one -on -one. <laughs> and they're the best in the league. Um, yeah. I love this play design. So you're saying no one else is doing this where they just line somebody up five yards deep. No, it's and the alignment outside. And it's, and it's Christian. It's almost exclusively Christian when they're doing it. Yeah. And I mean, he's the most versatile player in the league, but if you go to the next clip, it's the same thing, different concept. We go to this one, right? So a lot of people have a similar motion to this, right? They call it a fly shuffle. Um, like a F back, H back, whatever, right? But a lot of teams, when they shuffle them out there, they just run them on a flare, right? They're just trying to pull coverage out. So this is a pretty standard pure progression read, right? Out of empty. Mm -hmm. You got a go route by 44, who's your man zone tell out there. There's a corner out there, so you know it's zone. You got an out route by number two. But now what's different is you're getting guys on levels, right? You saw Christian, he ran a go route from five yards deep. Now he's backside. He's got a full head of steam. And he's essentially running a choice route. And this is something that the Niners do that a lot of teams don't do is they run their checkdowns or choice routes for them. So if that guy's outside leverage, Christian can break in. If that guy's inside leverage, Christian can break out. And he might not be running a choice route here because uh, George is running a hitch outside. But a lot of the times that backside route, when, when Brock's getting his eyes at the field, right? If that guy clamps Brandon Ayuk, he's getting his eyes right back to C-Mac. And he's trusting C-Mac to make the right decision. There's some fantasy owners that are pissed that he threw this to Brandon because I would love to see what Christian McCaffrey does if he catches the ball right here. Jeez. And it's all about this levels, This guy's right? got his back turned. This guy's got his back turned. This guy's not going to make the play, and this guy's going to have to make the play somewhere over here. <laughs> this is like – like there's a good chance he scores. I know. So we rewind it to the beginning a little bit, all right? So you're looking at seven, right? So this is just basic quarters coverage. Might be cloud in here. It looks like quarters. But seven's got three vertical – but he can pass him off if he feels two on an under route, right? He's got that mm -hmm. too. But since Christian's five yards deep in the backfield, 
Seven's not even thinking about him, right? Mm -hmm. He says, oh, I got vertical now. I got to get on my horse. Get now. I don't have any threat inside of me. So that immediately opens up the middle of the field for him. And yeah. you got, once again, a running back on a linebacker. You had Debo on a way, linebacker. If he does come down, this guy's bending right behind him, and there's a huge window. Again, this guy's yep. turning and running. Baseball turning for, for juice. This is awesome play design. And you're looking at the personnel, right? So you got two tight ends on the outside. That's giving you, hopefully, base on the field. Probably, maybe nickel, but you're getting a lot of big guys on the field. And you're getting your man zone indicators. If it's man, there's going to be safeties and linebackers out there, but it's not. It's zone. There's corners mm -hmm. out there. I was going to say, it's simple to think about it like this. Your corners are your best cover guys on mm -hmm. your defense. Well, right now, they're covering your fullback. And even though he's awesome, your tight end. Yep. You've got safeties and linebackers covering Brandon Ayuk, Debo, and Christian McCaffrey. That's you can't scheme, draw it up yeah. any better. It's scheming. Scheme that's Mon that's happening on Mondays and Tuesdays for you Niners mm -hmm. fans, and you're like fired up about Sunday. This stuff is happening and popping off in meeting rooms on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And the Niners do it better than anybody. Yeah. So when you look at all those plays, I think that in my mind is what teams are going to start doing next year. And now you have to have a pass catching back. I mean, everyone looks at the 49ers and like, oh, we want to do this. We want to do that. But they got Christian McCaffrey, you know? Mm -hmm. like, there's only one Christian McCaffrey in, in the entire NFL, and he is but incredible. It's like, so when we look at pass catching backs, you hear this from every down back, mm -hmm. like so much of it is how smart they are. Because yeah. like, a, like a lot of guys can run choice routes. I've done draft prep for a lot of guys at other positions where I go like, I don't know that like, I can play on third down because of all the protection responsibilities. That that's typically when you're really shifting and motioning, right? If you got time, you're definitely shifting and motioning on third down. If you got time when you break the huddle, so you just it's the most volume of information and decisions for that player to make. On top of, I need you to be able to win. I need you to have caught a lot of balls. One of the pieces of advice I tell college and NFL running backs is all off season train like a wideout. Just do nothing but wideout drills and go to a wide receiver coach and go play wide receiver for four months and then show up to camp. Because if you can do it, if you can handle the volume of information and you can run the routes and catch the ball, it's not just catching the ball, but if you can do all of those things, God, every team needs one. Everybody. You know what I mean? Like, you're invaluable. And if you got two, they're going to trade you and you're going to go somewhere else and be the guy. And mm -hmm. so I don't know where Christian's at rushing yards wise, right? That's a whole nother discussion, how good they are in the run game, but he's either getting the ball or he's having an influence on the person who is getting the ball. And that's what you want on a pass catching back. Mm -hmm. You need it. I mean, every team is asking for it too. Like you can't. Find you played it with him. I mean, like, how did that change when you were he a young guy? He had a thousand thousand when I played with him. I just thought that's what the NFL was. I thought, oh, <laughs> we're gonna, I'm gonna check it down to my running back half the time. He's gonna get twenty yards. I guess uh, it was easy, you know. Uh, and then I got, I got away from him, and I was like, dang, okay. So we had this guy. We got to put this guy in the game when we want to run the ball. And then we want to pass the ball. We got to put this guy in, you know, there's just, hmm. it's so tough to find good guys. And there's, there is a bunch of them around the league. There's a lot of guys that do it well, mm -hmm. but it's just, it changes your entire offense when you're game planning, when you're, when you're trying to get guys in different positions. And a lot of the time when you're playing zone defenses, you're trying to put those backers in binds and nothing does mm -hmm. it more than a pass catching running back. And so I think the Niners do it better than anyone. Like we said, I mean, we said we we're going to dog on them. We kind of just, kind of gave them their flowers pretty heavy there that's a great offense but um just from a from a matchup standpoint and like i said earlier the nfl is a, it's all about matchups it's a matchup league um kyle shannon does it as good as anybody all right so they have been the gold standard in terms of and there's other people doing it too but a lot of people are taking influencing i think you said you guys have ran things that are really similar to that right you guys mm -hmm. have taken some ideas from it mm -hmm. um but we also talked about how they are built to play with a lead. They're built to be up seven and control it. 100%. One, by not turning it over, right? Number one, last year, tied for third this year in turnover margin. Um, but also from a personnel perspective. And then what, like in your opinion, what does that keep them from doing? Because we've both mentioned that coming from behind is hard when you're not really hard. You don't have a million reps at just getting in gun and dropping back and having to sing for your supper and being in third and longs. You're not set up to do that. So what about their system that makes them so well, it makes it difficult for them to play from behind. Yeah. Well, we talked about earlier in the show, right? They, they were zero and 30 when trailing by more than five points entering the fourth quarter. Right. 
mm -hmm. under Kyle Shanahan, under that offense. An insane stat. I'm sure he's heard it too many times to count. I'm sure he's fucking over that stat. Now, they got their one win this weekend against the backers, but I think when you look at the offense, when you think about the 49ers offense, what do you think about? You think about under center runs. You think about shifts in motions. A lot of wordy calls. I mean, we know Sam's in that offense. Sam Darnold, our, our friend, mm -hmm. he's, he tells us how wordy that offense is. I thought I was in a wordy offense this year. That one's even wordier, right? There's cans, there's kills, there's alerts, there's all this stuff, right? There's a lot to think about. And that works great when it's a one-score ball game, a tight ball game, when you can go up to the line and the defense doesn't know if you're running or passing it, or you don't have time constraints where you've got to get on the ball, you have to go quick. It's It just works well, and that's what they're great at. They've been so dialed on it, right? The under center runs, play action pass game. They're number one in, in yards per attempt. Brock Purdy's only number 19 in pass attempts this year, right? Mm -hmm. So he's thrown for a ton of yards, but they don't have to throw it much because they're running the ball well. And so in my opinion, when you when you're a team like that, that's your identity. It's hard for you to switch that when it's six minutes left in the fourth quarter and you're down by 10, hmm. right? We got to score now and we got to score again, right? So we got to get on the ball. We got to get in shotgun. We can't shift in motion. I can't put my tight end out at number one to the field to see if it's man or zone. I can't bring them in to chip this guy. You know, you got to sit out and be like, all right, three by one. Here's my concept. Get up on the ball. Say hot. Right, okay. Completion. Get up on the ball again. Go, go, go. Here's, and that's just different. And I know you've been in, I've been in plenty of games where we've been down by way too many points, getting blown out and you're on the ball and you're trying to drop back and pass it and drive the ball down the field. It's one of the hardest things in football to do when the defense no, knows you're sure. going to pass it. D line knows you're going to pass it. And so when I look at the 49ers as a whole on offense, I just think if, if they're a team that gets down, you watch them play the Ravens, they turn the ball over a bunch early and they get down. It's just not who they are to come back from that. Right. I'm, I'm fired up for the, these games this week. I mean, everybody's fired up for these games this weekend. I'm not, I'm now looking at this fired up to see these concepts pop off. I'm going to watch Sam Fran. Hopefully if you're watching this point in the show, you're going to look at San Fran a little differently, maybe even see Baltimore um, and Kansas City and Detroit run some of these concepts. Uh, but please, in the comment section, let us know. If you like these types of discussions, the offseason is upon us. We've got all sorts of rabbit holes we can go down from concepts to coverages to protections to pressures. We can go, don't ask me about special teams because I don't know anything about it. But other than that, we can go down some rabbit holes and talk some ball if day. you want it. If you want it, throw it in the comment section. Let us know what you want to learn more about. Uh, and then guest-wise, we can have some guests come in and talk about what they did last year. Um, and I think that's the plan. So thank you very much. Our sponsor, Happy Dad, thank you very much. Kyle, man, I'm bummed that your season's over. But looking forward to seeing you here in a couple of days. Yep. we got to figure out our studio, too. You're gonna, we're going to be in here together. I know. We're going to be together, finally. Everyone thought we were together this whole time, but we're not. Yeah. So, and if you didn't know this till now, Kyle's got his studio in Buffalo. Mine's in San Clemente. He's got a desk in the same right room here soon. Me. Thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the games this weekend.